God and our Savior. What an awesome week we've had. <laughs> it's been quite a week, but we are so grateful that the sun and the moon do not govern the earth. The Lord God Almighty is the one who's in charge of every realm. And because of him being the ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, we can rest assured knowing that our lives are in the palm of his very hand. And thus, we're coming into his presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. We give him praise because he is the ruler of all things. Our great and mighty God is worthy to be praised, and we do praise him on this morning. We join our hearts and our minds as I welcome you from all across the globe, literally all across, all across the United States of America. And here in the great state of Texas, we had quite a week, but the Lord is the light of the world. He restore light, not just in the atmospheric environment, in the geographical settings, but he restores light even in the heart of his children. As we had such an uh, awesome, I'm still going to call it an awesome week, because if you focus just on the breaking pipes, the broken pipes, and then the lights gone out, and then the snow and the ice, you, you can also turn your eyes to see the, the perseverance that landed on Mars. This is a great discovery with the hope that one day men will land on Mars. When a friend of mine, and by the way, I need to say thanks to all of you who call from out of state. Those of you who call to check on us from California, from New York, from Kansas, Atlanta, different places. Truly, I realize that you are indeed connected with us online on Sunday. So I thank God for you and for your family. Opening up our service this morning, I want to connect my heart and my mind with the prophet of all. Jeremiah said in chapter 16, O oh Lord, my strength, my fortress, my refuge in time of distress, to you, O oh Lord, the nations will come from the ends of the earth and say, Our fathers possessed nothing but false gods, worthless idols that did them no good. Uh, do men make their own gods? Yes, but they are not gods at all. Therefore, I will teach them. In this time, I will teach them this time I will tell them and as I will teach them my power and might then they will know that my name is the Lord he is the Lord over every realm he is the ruler he is the king over heaven and earth and thus we enter in to worship him we continue to do so even as we enter in to adore him bow your heads with me in prayer as we go before our great God, we don't pray to inviting in this locale. He's already been here. Isaiah says his presence filled the earth. We pray to simply, simply ask him to localize his attention to his children who are calling upon his matchless name. Thus I invite you, 
bow your heads with me. If you are in your car, if you're driving, if you are at the dinner table, if you are in the nursing home, hospital, at home, in your den, maybe outside enjoying the cool, very nice weather the Lord has warmed it up for us. We're going to see today that he is the ruler of every season. The rain, the sunshine, the snow, the storm, he's in charge of it all. Let's go before him in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. What a joy to be reminded that you are the God of the sunshine, you are the God of the rain, you are the God of the snow, you are the God of the sea, you are the God of the rivers, as well as the God of the mountain, God of the valleys. No wonder when your children found themselves in whatever space, whatever season, whatever situation, you are able to reach out to each one of them because you are the God who rules over every realm, every season, and every place. This morning as we come in, we commit our hearts, our minds, our very spirit to you. Every scrunch of this environment and everywhere your children are worshiping you this morning. May you localize your very sweet presence in their lives and in their midst. And God, not just for them to... Uh, uh, subscribe if they are worshiping or worshiping on YouTube or share if they are worshiping on Facebook but we call upon even higher platform that of the throne of grace where our king the head of the church sits ruling over every realm and thus we bow before you in adoration and thanksgiving thank you for protecting us there are some who lost loved one during this storm, during this pandemic, during this very uh, harsh week we've had nationwide. But we pray that your very spirit will comfort them. There are some who gave baby, like baby Clyde was born in Houston, in the midst of this uh, uh, blackout. No water, no light, no electricity. But you were there with the parents and let this baby reach this world, even in the midst of this moment. What a joy you gave them in that dark moment, reminding me when the little baby Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the middle of the cold, and yet Mary and Joseph were welcoming the Savior of the world. We welcome you in our hearts, in our service this morning. I pray for all those who tune in right now and those who will tune in later. And whatever the time might be, you are in charge and your presence is there to encourage their hearts, to build their faith, and to strengthen them to walk. Thank you for being a mighty fortress a shelter even in the time of storm. We love and bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everyone will say, Amen. I continue to thank you so much for tuning in to worship with us. We know on Sundays, you have so many choices, but it requires commitment to the family of God, to the family of TTBF, for you to continue to join with us. Again, we thank God for you. If you are breathing this morning, if you still have light, I'm not talking about the electricity. I'm talking about the light, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. You have been turned into a light because he says, you are the light of the world. Wherever you are, shine for him. Certain situation and circumstances of life will not turn our light on because it's connected straight to the main light, the Lord Jesus Christ. As we worship him this Sunday, this is a Sunday we've never seen before. Gather your heart and your mind to give him thanks. I saw this airplane yesterday mid-air caught on fire. Even as the engine parts are falling on top of houses, I was reminded here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we have major air airports all around us. And God protects us whether we are awake in the morning or sleeping at night. Hundreds of planes are crossing over our heads every day. <laughs> and the Lord protects us. We pray for the family that God spare all of their lives. Ah, what a skill of a pilot to land this airplane with the fire in it and save his life and every lives in that plane. That's how we can trust our Lord Jesus Christ to take us through fire, rain, and water. We will see that later on in the book of Isaiah as we get into the word. But I welcome you now. Take a moment. Take the uh, communion element. Gather your family around you. We do this every Sunday as the head of our church, the head of the church himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, commend this to the body to do this as often as they meet. It's all, in other words, as often as we gather around him to worship him, bring the remembrance with you. Remember his death. Remember his suffering. But remember all the promises also that he has made to his children. 
Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the days. So this morning we worship him. While we are turning in, you're getting your communion elements. Once again, I was reminded to encourage you. If you are watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the button right below your screen. If you are watching on Facebook, go ahead and share, invite a friend, a co-worker, a neighbor, someone very close to you. That's how we can, in this pandemic, while services are being done online, you too can be an evangelist by reaching out to a friend, by just pressing a button, share, and invite them to come and join you in worship. Let's go to the text. Our Biblical background this morning for the communion time will be found in the book of Peter. I will invite you to turn there with me in Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. I will read the text and invite you to participate, not just in the bread and the cup, but in intake of the word of God. Notice what the apostle, the preacher on the day of Pentecost will say. He says this, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom also he, uh, through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Hallelujah. I, I, I am preaching and reading this this morning around the communion that the same spirit of the Lord will still go down to whatever prison his children are bound in to rescue them today. Look at the verse with me. We're still in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20 now. The spirit who are in prison who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water, the water of Noah, symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not only the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand. With angels, watch the text, with angels, authority and power in submission under him, to him. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me. Even as I read those scriptures, Lord, I was reminded of one of our worshipers, co-worshipers all the way up from New Jersey. I was sharing this week to tell me that even all the snow and all the rain could be a new baptism the Lord is pouring throughout the earth. And lo and behold, here am I reading it here in the book of Peter reminding us that water that covers the earth in the time of Noah was a form of baptism, ha, foreshadowing the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the church to come. Look at how Peter went back to reach to Noah's water to say that water was a form of baptism. Could it be that you're baptizing the entire globe for the return of your, of, of your very son? Could it be that you're baptizing the whole earth, preparing it for the return of our Savior to catch up with the church? Find us ready. Find us busy doing the work of the Lord. Find us, God, uh, our hearts ready to welcome you, even on this morning. Bless the bread that represents your body. We're not looking forward in the sense of looking to the bread as if our Savior will come to be uh, sacrificed on the cross. Y you've been here. You've been on the cross. We're taking it as we look backward, but also forward to your return. Bless it even for all the saints obediently participate in this very moment. We also lift up the cup before you with the juice in it representing not the bl blood of animals and goats and bulls and pigeons that have been shed back in the Old Testament. No, we look back, but as far as the Calvary, where in time and space, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, shed his blood just like Peter wrote in this very passage. And we also look forward to his return for the church. And you said without the shedding of his blood, there will not be forgiveness of sin. So thank, uh, thank you, Lord, for the cleansing of our sins, for the removal of strongholds. Oh God, for the breaking down 
of the chains of the evil one. We may not be behind a bar where we can see police officers watching the doors, but the enemy have so many other bars, prisons, that your spirit is able to set captives free. Even as we partake this morning, as you, oh God, cleansing us from our sins, let shackle fall. Let your children be free. Hallelujah. And let your spirit fall upon your church. Even Thanksgiving this morning. We're not talking about a building or a piece of property or carpet or pews. We're talking about the souls that you have saved from eternity past and even in time and space as they responded obediently. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, Savior, and friend, we pray. Hallelujah. Let's partake the bread together. Everyone, wherever you are, grab the piece of bread. Let's eat before our great God. And remember him who, who bled and died for us on Calvary. Let's eat together. Let's partake the cup together. The cup reminding us of the blood shed of our Savior. He pours out his blood, just like he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Let's drink together. And Father, we thank you as we continue to ask you that you pour out your spirit upon our flesh. Today, we join our prayers, even with the global day of prayer, seeking God for the city, as your word will remind us on this very fifth day of prayer, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, streams of living water will flow from within him. Flow within us, even on today. You promised that you will do it in the book of John, chapter 7, verse 37 and 38, and your spirit is alive now doing it. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Flow through us. Flow to this time of worship so that your people will experience the very presence of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And everyone, wherever you are, say it with me. Amen. Amen. And amen. We're going to turn now to our dear sister, Natasha Williams, who is the minister over fellowship in our church, been serving faithfully. She will be formally welcoming you this morning. Tasha, we will turn the microphone to you at this time. Blessings to you, my sister. Thank you. 
we pray that the offering today will go out and it will that it will bless your team. We pray for those who have the heart to give but might not have the means to give. Will you bless them today? Thank you for those who are able to give. We pray a special blessing for them also. Father, we love you and owe for grace to love you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And oh, for grace to love you even more. Even this morning, as you begin to thank God for his faithfulness toward all of us, toward the body of Christ worldwide, we want to remember those who are, even this morning, still without power, even those who are without uh, electricity or water. Uh, we want to encourage you to keep your hope in the Lord, as you will see his presence is with you even on this morning. We will see that in the word. We also want to remember this morning and thank God for all the first responders. This week I was out and about with a first responder, one of our chief here in the city, literally rescuing someone very dear to our hearts. And as I realized the kind of work these men are doing in the middle of the snow and the ice, and this is not just snow and ice, these guys are out sometimes three days in a row, back to back, helping others, rescuing them from fire. We also want to remember the family in Duncanville, many families in Duncanville that have lost their properties to the fire, those in Fort Worth as well. As I mentioned earlier, the many families, the Lord spared their lives in that United Airlines uh, flight uh, over Colorado. When pieces is starting to fall off the air and the airplane is being caught on fire, listen, if you were in that plane, to your heart will have want somebody to be praying for you. Thank God for this skillful pilot who landed the plane safely. This morning, I also want to remember our dear brother Elkins up in the Pennsylvania area and let him know that you are still in our prayers as we continue to watch the healer of all sickness, continue to strengthen your bodies and use you mightily. I was really encouraged by your phone call this week, and we're going to keep on pressing on in prayer. In Houston, our dear brother Chris, we also want to send a kudo to you. See the awesome work you're doing there with those many homes and properties that you are building to help those who are in serious need. We thank God for all those who are celebrating their anniversaries and also their birthdays within the month of February. I'm a February baby as well. When I say baby, meaning born in February also. But so many of you who are celebrating both your anniversaries and your birthdays in the month of uh, February, we do thank God for you. Dr. Tolton from Arlington, we do send you our greetings and pray God's favor and blessings upon you and the family. Kelly, those boys are growing. And thank God for you and Elroy, the great job that you guys are doing in the kingdom of God. Thank God for you. Great memories come to our minds when we think of you. Our dear brother, Pastor Enel Fertile, you will see an announcement on the screen in the very near uh, few seconds from now. Uh, we'll be celebrating the anniversary down in Fort Myers, Florida. Pastor Enel is one who had spent some time as an intern with us while he was studying here at Dallas Theological Seminary. Both he and his wife were interns with us. And after spending some many months, in fact years, serving with us here at TTBF, Thanksgiving Tabernacle Bible Fellowship, we had gone down to Fort Myers uh, to uh, orchestrate and plan for his ordination. In fact, following the ordination shortly afterwards, his installation in the church where he was at the time. But since then, he has planted Bethel Bible Church in Fort Myers, Florida. I want you to know the anniversary will be coming very soon, actually, on the first Sunday, first week of March. And yours truly keep us in your prayers. I'll be the first speaker to be uh, encouraging them for the first three days of their anniversary celebration. We want to pray for not only Pastor Enel and his wife, uh, Sister Gerland, who led the children ministries at Thanksgiving for many years. Uh, even after Pastor Hinel has gone to begin to pave the way with the church, Sister Gerland was still serving faithfully. And very soon you will hear about a new ordination 
that we're currently working on with some pastors up in Canada, in Florida, that we will be uh, installing in the Miami area in the near future before the year is over. We are working on some of these plans and meetings and teaching because it takes a month of preparation before we actually do the actual ordination uh, ceremony. So we covered you to keep Pastor Enel, his wife and the family of Bethel in Fort Myer is much of your prayer. I want to continue to encourage my brother because he's doing such an excellent work in the kingdom of God. Uh, we pray together very often and the communications keep on building. We thank God for new leaders that he's raising for the last day's work and ministry. Pastor Enel, God blessings to you. Here at Thanksgiving Tabernacle Bible Fellowship, we want you to know you don't have to plant a church. You don't have to start a new radio ministry or television ministry. You too can be a minister of the Lord by simply press the button under your screen, share. And also if you're on Facebook, just, um, yeah, if you're on Facebook, share. But if you're on YouTube, subscribe and invite others to come and join us in worship. You can invite even unbelievers. Friends who don't know Christ as their personal savior, as a way of evangelism, outreach, to join us in our time of worship. Because throughout our services, I will always uh, give them a chance to give their hearts to the Lord. On that note, I want to thank you for your faithful contribution. Because during this pandemic, if you were not faithful to the Lord and to your church and continue to give, I don't know what we would have done because we're not in a building where we're customarily as, as what we used to, to pass a plate, but you have been faithful to continue to give online and to stand the work and the ministry. For this, we are very grateful. And rest assured, the Lord will continue to bless you for your faithfulness to his work and to his kingdom. May God favor rest upon you. Uh, this morning, we want to continue with our series that we started sometimes back with regard to the everlasting ruler over every realm. When we speak about the everlasting ruler over every realm, we are speaking of none other but the Lord Jesus Christ himself in concert with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We don't serve three gods. We serve one God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit is the one who's left in charge of the church of Jesus Christ on earth, meaning he seals every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone who has given their lives to Christ recognize that they are sinner in need of a savior who cry out to the Lord for salvation and turn their hearts to him instantly as the Holy Spirit of God applies the gospel, the word that you are reading, who is actually a person, when you are hearing the gospel, that Christ died for your sins, he was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead. The Holy Spirit of God apply what we call salvific grace to open up your hearts and awaken your dead soul to the Lord God, and you become to know who he is as our Abba, Father, Romans 8, 16, clearly put it together for us. And thereafter, we know who God is as our Father. And you become a part of the family of God. And because of this, we do know that the Lord God Almighty himself, the Father, sits on his throne to rule. And Jesus Christ, since after the ascension, sat at the right hand of the Father, ruling, praying, and to sitting on behalf of all of us, his children, the church. And he's also building and preparing a place for us too. For he promised us before he left, he will be going up in the heavens to prepare a place for us. And where he is, there we will be also. What about now, Pastor Durst? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked following a week here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Most of the country have been under a serious storm and ice we've never seen before. Unprecedented time. Unprecedented 
weather covers the entire United States of America. It seems that since 2020, we've been experiencing ex unprecedented movement all over the place, unprecedented pandemic, unprecedented fire, unprecedented hurricane, and now unprecedented snow to the level that we have not seen in decades. But going through those storms, in the middle of the snowstorm, you begin to have pipes breaking up in your houses. Dallas, Fort Worth area have never experienced uh, single digits for a long time. When you go down to almost one, two, three degrees and then things are freezing up on you, most of the people around here are not used to it. The cities don't even have equipments to push the ice and the snow. What do you do? Well, you take shelter. You stay home. Ha! By staying home, it becomes safer for you and for your family and for your children, even for the first responders who are on the streets. I need to tell you there's a greater shelter than first responders. I need to tell you there's a greater shelter than just your house where you were. Some of you, your house could not even become a shelter for you because it was colder in your apartments, colder in your house than it was outside as the temperature began to go lower. We have a God who's in charge of every season. That's the one we've been preaching about. He says he's in charge of the storm. He's in charge of the rain. He's in charge of the water. So I will invite you to turn with me to the prophet Jeremiah. We're going to cruise with Jeremiah and then Isaiah. And then we're going to land together in the gospel of Matthew. He's in charge of the rain. He's in charge of the uh, sky. He's in charge of the clouds. And he's even in charge of every life, both in heaven and on earth. As I just read for you earlier, let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 16 with me. I want you to know, our God who is in charge of all things, he is in charge of your life, is in charge of all, listen, not the weather, man. We have a God who's in charge of the temperature. He can cause it to go as low as 25 below, as well as he can bring it up all the way up to 83, 84, 94. Thank God he has not pushed it up to the 200s. <laughs> you glad the Lord never pushed that button all the way up to 150, 170. What will we do? And he can. He truly can. We can see his mercy when he keeps it below 100. In Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 19, turn there with me. See what the prophet Jeremiah would have said. If you were to push the gauge all the way up to verse 14, you will see some serious words of rebuke in Jeremiah. But when it comes to verse 16, chapter 16, verse 19, it says, Oh Lord, you are my strength and my fortress. Jeremiah is calling the people of God to know that God is the refuge. If you are in him, no matter what's going on around you, you are secure. Look at the text once again, verse 19. Chapter 16, verse 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in time of distress, to you the nations will come from the ends of the earth and say, Our Father possess nothing but false idols, false gods, worthless idols that did them no good. Listen to me for a moment. I'm going to keep on reading. But you need to know, worthless idols and false gods, they'll never do you any good, but bring more dissolution, more heartache, and more pain. Verse 20, look at Jeremiah 16, 20. Do men make their own gods? Yes, but they're not God at all. Therefore, I will teach them this time. I will teach them my power and might. Then they will know that my name is what? My name is the Lord. Did you notice the word Lord is L? O R D all capital. That is to say, I am in charge of every realm. That my name is the Lord. I am the one who's in charge of every realm of heaven and of the earth. And he says that this God, you better not confuse me with any other false God. If you confuse me with any false God, you will insult me. You better not be worshiping me and worshiping little gods that men made with their own hands. That's not gods at all. I will tell you during the time of 
crisis and time of distress, people tend to turn to religious objects to even address them as an, a fortress of safety. But as for us who believe in God, we know there's a true and living God. We cannot put any other God beside him, before him, or alongside of him. He alone is, a, is God in a class all by himself. That's why in the same book of Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 10. Don't miss that. Jeremiah 10, 10. Jeremiah what? Jeremiah 10, 10. I'm making, I'm encoding it in your mind. Jeremiah 10, 10. Jeremiah said in chapter 10 verse 10. Look it up with me in your text. The same prophet who was speaking about God who's in charge, that his name is the Lord. In chapter 10 verse 10, Jeremiah said the word so clearly and called all the people of God, not just the Jewish nation, all the people of God, all over the earth to know that, but this God the Lord is the true God. Did you see the Lord same as in chapter uh, 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 chapter 16 L-O-R-D all capital. When you come before this great God, you bow. When you come before this great God you, you renounce any other false idolatrous gods. You renounce anything that you will tend to put as a object of rescue as an object of worship even in your mind you reject them you worship the only true God Jeremiah said in chapter 10 verse 10 but the Lord is the true God he is the living God he is the eternal king this is where I focus with this series as him being the ruler over every realm he is the eternal king over every realm you know this month we also celebrate black history month in the United States of America as I watch and then observe several uh, recollection of great heroes that the the Lord has raised in this country to fight against injustice, to fight for the freedom of all people, including the black people, but for all people. Dr. Martin Luther King was not a civil rights leader simply for the African American. He was a civil rights leader for all people. His influence, which has forced South, Af uh, South Africa, gave Nelson Mandela strength to keep on bursting with patience, with no violence, the doors of prison to the point that he reached to be the president of South Africa. His influence reached even as far as Kenya to encourage Kenya to lead with righteousness, lead with justice. So as we reflect upon this month, we know it's not just Martin Luther King. We have a king who is himself the king of kings and the lord of lords. I love when Bernice King will say, you too should be a king. <laughs> you too should be a deliberator of people who are suffering injustice. What was she saying? She was going even higher to say, not just my father who is the ultimate human Dr. King in our family, but we have a king over Dr. King. He can teach us righteousness and justice for us to know that he rules over every other false God. He can teach you righteousness. He can teach you how to really set men free from the slavery of sin. Jeremiah said this God is the true God. He's the eternal king. Nobody elected him. There is no inauguration for him. From eternity past, he has been king. For eternity to come, he will be forever king of kings and lord of lords. Look at the text with me. Back to Jeremiah chapter uh, 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 10. V -v Verse uh, 10 says, he is the living God, the eternal king. Watch this text. When this king is angry, the earth trembles. The nations cannot endure his wrath. Don't miss that. When the king of heaven is angry, <laughs> Washington DC combined with NATO and the UN, you can combine it, all the allies together, including China, including Russia, all the BRICS countries, that is to say Brazil, that is to say Russia, India, China, uh, and South Africa, all the BRICS countries, including with the UN, none of them can provide and stand against against our great king who is himself eternal. It says all the nations cannot endure his wrath. Verse 11, tell them this. Today is my assignment to declare. I'm on the command to declare and tell you 
tell them this. Proclaim it to the whole wide world. That our king is eternal. He's immortal. He's invisible. He's in charge of heaven. And he's in charge of the earth. He's in charge of the clouds. He's in charge of the rain. He's in charge of the storms. And he's in charge of the waters. You will see in a few moments. As Isaiah will say even later on. But now Jeremiah says. Verse 11. Tell them this. The false gods. These gods who did not make the heavens and the earth. Will perish from the earth and from under the earth. Verse 12. Look at the text. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom. He stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Open up and clear it up for me so they can see. He let the rains come down, you know. Clear it up from the text so they can see the background. There. They will see. The, listen to this, you know. They are clearing out. Because he stressed out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in heavens roar. Can you see that now? When the God of heaven thunders, listen, the waters in heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. That's God. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sent lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouse. Who's in charge of this? The God who made the heavens and the earth. Not the weatherman. It's God who made this thing. Notice this and underline this in your Bible. When you go through some storms and you see the weather is going crazy. Listen, God's still in charge. He's releasing them from their storehouses and he's still in control. Let me tell you something. The store, the rain will not go uh, beyond the limit that it's supposed to fall. Somebody said, I was born on the island. I have watched high waves come up from the ocean but the ocean has a limit. It never covers us while we were there on the island. God is the one who's in charge of heaven and earth. And Isaiah will remind us, we worship this God. We serve him in spirit and in truth. And we revere this God. We will not go before him thinking that we can do whatever we want to do. And that's why the king of the prophets, Isaiah will now come and call all the people of God, not just the Jewish nations, but the people of God all over the world. Remember Isaiah is described as the king of all the prophets. They're called him theologian call Isaiah the king of the prophets in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 to 13 Isaiah will describe the gratefulness of our God how he is a rescuer how he is a savior a deliverer even when we go through storms even when we go through rain he controlled these things even to promise us that he is there with his people turn to Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 to 13 with me for a brief moment look at the text but now, but now, every time you turn to your Bibles, you begin to read a verse that starts with the verse, but now, I want you to have this in your mind. You just enter a new season. <laughs> but now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, put your name there. He who created you, Edsel, put your name there. He who created you, Beverly, put your name there. He who created you, Edsel the second. Put your name there. He who created you, Edmund Durst. Put your name there. He who created you, Mary and Brian Benjamin. Put your name there. He created you, Nigel Reynolds and Esther Reynolds, Keke Reynolds and Jack Durst. Put your name there. Philip Durst. He who created you, Rachel. He who created you. can go down. He who created you. He who formed you, O Israel. Fear not. This is a time for us to calm our hearts. No matter what the storm you might be going through, the snow is almost gone from the ground here in Texas. Things are returning back to normal because the Lord who's in charge of the sun says, Son, it's time for you to come up now. Snow, it's time for you to melt now. Who control these things? The great God of heaven. He says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. I want you to circle this in your Bible. You're going to need this apart from a Sunday morning. You're going to be in the middle of a storm, on a boat, or in an ICU room. You're going to be in a room with your child, a high fever. You will need to be reminded God is in charge of sickness, of fever too, and you belong to him. If the enemy can make you believe that you don't belong to God, you're left by yourself in the middle of a storm, in the middle of a rain, in the middle of a, 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 a listen, the house is shaking. You will think that you by yourself, 
But God promised you, you are his. Did you see the word says, you are mine? Circle that. Let hope enter your minds. Let hope take over anxiety. Let hope take over anxious depression. Because you belong to the king who controls the heavens and the earth. I pray in the name of Jesus even now that the spirit of the Lord will take over every depressive spirit, every spirit of lack, every spirit of torment, every spirit of, listen, what do we do from here? Turn to the Lord and worship him because you are his. You belong to him. Listen to me. You belong not to Biden, but you belong to the king of kings who is in charge of the heavens and the earth. He's in charge of Biden too. Kamala belongs to him. The White House belongs to him. The United Nations belongs to him. All the allies around the globe, every government. Remember what it says in the text of Isaiah? The same Isaiah earlier on chapter 9 says, And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And he will be called Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting what? Father. That Father said, you are mine. Look at the text again. Last word, two words of verse, of verse 1. Isaiah 41. Last two words says, you are what? You are mine. Verse 2. So, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Can I park the car here for, to tell you a personal story? Wednesday, in the middle of the storm, I left my house early in the morning, dressed myself up with boots on and a stick in my hand. I said, I'm out to go and rescue and find out where someone is. As I'm going like one hour from my house, I'm still at the gate. I've not even reached the main street yet. As I said to myself, how am I going to make it? And I said, I'm going to go. I'm out. I need to go. I keep on pressing on, climbing up a hill. On top of the hill, in the snow, I find myself walking as if I was on Mars because the snow was, so, I was higher on top of the hill. By the time I reach the hill, the wind now is blowing in my face everywhere. I said, Lord, what do I do here? In a few seconds, for almost an hour and a half, I did not see any cars on the road. Few seconds, pulling right next to me. <laughs> He's one of my dear friends in the city. One of the police chiefs said, Doris, is that you? I said, yeah, that's me. Where are you going? I'm going after someone to rescue and find out how they're doing. He says, hop in the car. I said, how in the world did you know I was there? He says, man, God knows where you are. <laughs> I was reminded, God has the best GPS for all of his children, including you this morning. If you are worshiping with us from a hospital bed, you are still his. He knows where you are. If you just buried a loved one, you are still his. He knows where you are. If the grocery is going low in your house, he still will provide for you. The text says, look at the text with me in Isaiah chapter 43. Verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Notice this is futuristic tense. Futuristic tense says that don't worry, when that will happen in the future, I will be there. Say that with me. I will be there. The God Almighty says I will be where? I will be there with you in the middle of the water. In the same text, you're going to see where he applies it even in the present tense. To remind you, what I promised you a long time ago, here are mine in the middle of the situation. I had it on my schedule to show up. When we are in time of trouble, our great father in heaven will show up to rescue us. Look at the text. It says, verse 2, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire... You will not be burned. The flame will not set you ablaze. Did you see that? Ask Daniel. Ask Shadrach. Ask me, me, uh, uh, Shadrach and, and Abednego. They will say, I have experienced fire around me, but he came in the middle of the fire with me. The flame did not ablaze me because he was there with me. He turned the fire into AC. He turned the cold room into a ventilated room and then sheltered me in. He promised even to the fire. All of you who were saved in that airplane caught on fire midair. Let me tell you, if you are listening to me here, God protected you from the... Give him praise. Yeah, we thank the pilot. But we praise the God of heaven who is with you, who was with you, even in the middle of the, uh, that fire. Can you imagine people on the ground and seeing that big P-51 
piece of that engine coming from the sky with no one to control it, but there was a God. That's why there was nobody on the ground who got killed. God protecting them. God said, when you are in the middle of the fire, I myself will be with you and you will not burn. The flame will not set you ablaze. I want you to look at Isaiah 43, 3. What did I say? Isaiah 43, 3. Look at the text. Underline it in your Bible. Look at the text. For I am the Lord. Did you see that? L O R D. I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your deliverer. Listen. If you have to deliver a baby, the baby is not here yet, the Lord himself will see you through that. We are praying. In fact, this past week on the 17th, Clyde was born in Houston. In the middle of this storm that was going on outside, when the, when the light goes off out in the house, there is no water. And now here his mother was about to deliver this new baby born Clyde. In the middle of no lights, Storm outside, a life was coming into the world, and the baby was born. Father just going to fourth gear, become a doctor immediately to help the wife, to help the baby come out safely. And both mother, baby, everybody is doing well. If you have to deliver, you have not delivered yet, they put you on bed rest. We are in much prayer that the God of heaven will see you through. He said he is your deliverer. Don't put your hope just in doctors, just in medicine, just in the expert. You have an expert expert lift up your heads and look higher and praise him even as you are waiting upon him the text says since you are precious and honored to me before even goes there it says in verse 3 b for you are for i am the lord your god the holy one of israel your savior i give egypt for your ransom Cush and seba for your for your stead pastor Darius, what does that mean have you heard about the Egyptian Empire? <laughs> the Egyptian Empire at one time was the superpower on the face of the globe. Have you heard of the Queen of Sheba who went to visit with uh, uh, King Solomon? Who wanted to inquire wisdom? Who wanted to see for herself? Sheba was, listen to me, to me, was a great empire in her time. Have you heard of the Kushite people, the tall, high, handsome, African, very powerful men? The Kush, Kushite empire was a strong empire, strong built people. God Almighty said, if I can give you a comparison, I can give the entire empire of Egypt for your ransom. I can give the entire kingdom of Sheba for your state. He wants to assure his people, listen, when I tell you I will rescue, I am with you, take it to the bank. Rest assured, my promises are real. The text continues to say, why will God do all of these things for his people? Since he is the ruler, nobody tell him what to do. Nobody tell him who to help. He helped all of his children. And he's calling them to have reverence and to know that he is God and he himself is worthy of their worship. He says, look at the verse, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 4. It says, since you are precious and honored in my sight. Some of you need to hear this word this morning. It will be a vitamin and a vaccine to your esteem to know that you are precious and honored by the Most High God. Not just Mary is highly esteemed. <laughs> Not just Daniel is highly esteemed. The Lord God says you are precious and you are honored in his sight. Can I tell you something that is not in the text, but that, that is so true? Everyone who lives on the face of the earth has God's image on them. They call it the imago Dei. You bear the image of your creator God. That's why taking the life of a person is forbidden by God in any and every culture. As you know and worship him, he says that you are precious and honored. Look at the text. In his sight. Because he does what? He says, I love you. Circle this in your Bible. Some of you were crying last Sunday on Valentine's Sunday. I don't have a Valentine. You do have a Valentine. The King of Glory is your Valentine. Did you hear me? The King of Glory said, I love you. The one who will love you while he knows everything about you. There is no secret closet for him. Yet, 
He loves us to the point of sending his own son to die for us on Calvary. Can you imagine? Peter said, the apostle Peter, the angels are looking into the salvific box to know why do you see in them that you love them? Why do you see in them that you spare them from hell? Why do you see in them that you sent your one and only son to go and rescue them? And you did not rescue none of the angels who fell of heaven with Lucifer because what? He loves us. The Lord loves you this morning. This is a message to let you know not only that he rules over everything, every season, over water and rain, over storm and car, time of peace, but he loves you. The Lord loves you. You don't need love from anyone else to make you feel like you are a person. The love of God pours into your heart alone will let you know you belong to him and thus you will be able to worship him and him alone. The Bible says Says, we love because he first what loves us this morning I pray for a fresh cup of the love of God to pour into your heart and make you a brand new lovable person not just you me too I need my fresh cup this morning I welcome a fresh cup of the love of God into my own heart into our church into our city into our country if we think men can establish peace and restore love for each other in this country on their own forget about it he is the king who can do it that's the one who says I love you look at the text Isaiah chapter 43 verse 4b I love you I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. I will give people in exchange for what? For your Take those promises, put them in the bank of your heart. When you are most discouraged, when the enemy wants you to be depressed, remind yourself, the one who made the heavens and the earth tells you he will even give men in exchange for your life. Did he not give the life of his son in exchange for your life. That's what happened at the cross. The cross is the greatest world uh, 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 exchange. The World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan is not really a World Trade Center. Calvary is. He trade our sins for his sanctification. He trade our eternal death for his eternal life. And he who knew no sin, became sin, so he can give us eternal life. Listen to me. He is telling you this morning, he loves you to the uttermost. Isaiah continued to remind us in verse 5, do not be afraid. Don't let fear cover your heart, for I am with you. You remember up in verse 1, he says, I will be with you. But this is the present tense. I am where? With you. You've heard this before. Emmanuel, God is where? With us. He says, I am with you. I want you to circle this. When you were in the cold apartment, the Lord was there with you. When you were taking a hot shower, the Lord was there with you. When you were in the ICU room connected in that ventilator, the Lord was there with you. If you belong to Jesus, the Bible says we belong to him in life. That's physical life. We belong to him even in physical death. You are still his. When we die, we are still with him. That's why the Bible can give us the confidence absent from this body is present with the Lord. Death does not separate the believer from Jesus Christ at all. I need to put it this way. This way. Physical death does not separate the believer from the Lord. Rather, usher the believer in the real presence of seeing clearly now. Wow, I am with my Lord. He says in the sticks, verse 4, since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I give men in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And I will say to the south, do not hold them. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Do you have some wayward children this morning? Claim these promises of the Lord over them. 
Pray those verses over them. They may not be out of your sight. They may not be out of your home. They might be doing things that you as a parent did not raise them to with those values. You can pray. Lord, you say you're going to bring my sons back. You're going to bring my daughters back. You're going to call them from the north. There's a beautiful song. I think it's from Hillsong. Way from down under. Shout to the north and the south. Speak to the east and the west. Jesus Christ is Lord, the Savior of the world. You can sing those songs as you are waiting patiently on the God of heaven to restore your son, to restore your daughter, to restore your cousin, to restore your nephew, to restore your family members back to himself. He's a God of restoration. It says in the text, not only will I call him from the north, it says verse 7, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, who I form and made, I will call them to myself. Jump with me to verse 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe and understand that I am God. So that you may know and believe and understand that I am what? I am God. So that you may know and believe and understand that what? So I am God, I am he, I am God. And before me, no gods. Did you realize the word no God is little g? Before this great God who rules over heavens and earth, over rain and the waters, over fire and the storms, there is no other God who can deliver but he alone. He says, before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me, which means from eternity to eternity, I am what? God, said the Lord. Verse 11, which says, I, even I, am the Lord. Apart from me, there is no Savior. I want you to put Acts chapter 4, verse 12, next to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11. Why do I ask you to do so? Because in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the word of the Lord says, even in the New Testament, there is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus. That was not something new to the New Testament. Where back in the Old Testament, Isaiah declared in chapter 43, verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no what? There is no Savior. There is no Savior who can deliver men. I don't care if they come out with the best vaccine. There will be a day, oh, that will, God will call us home to himself. No vaccine can keep men here eternally. But there is a Savior who can give you eternal life. When life on earth is over, you just begin to live for all eternity. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that you're going to have eternal life when you die. Eternal life, that's something you acquired before you die physically. Because you have to be conscious to receive that from the Father. Remember the thief at the cross? The Lord Jesus Christ said, today you will be with me where? In paradise. Because that very day he was going to die physically. And the next second he will already be with the Father up in the heaven. The Lord declares, I even I am the Lord. And apart from me there is no Savior. Do you know him today? Is he your Savior? Have you ever accepted him as your personal Savior? This is a mighty good time for me to say. If you have never accepted him, don't want for him to just give you electricity and water and shelter shelter and food and then you reject him as the ultimate savior who can save you there is no other savior who can save you what do you want you want a jacket or you want salvation you want a bottle of water or you want the living water listen what what, what would you choose a bottle of water or living water Today is the day for you to ask for the living water. What do you mean living water? Pastors, I'm glad you asked. In the book of John chapter 4, that's one of the books in the Bible. He promised the woman at the well, you can come here to get uh, physical water day in, day out. For all centuries to come, but I am the one, the I go Amy. I give living water that will bubble up in you until eternity. That is to say, I'll give you salvation that you will be satisfied and become a woman of God from this point forward. And she said, yeah. Give me this water. You check it for us. She said, give me this water. Why don't you be as wise as that woman? Why don't you say, Pastor Doris, I want to receive that water. And I will say, yes, close your eyes right now. Lord Jesus, here is one who's deciding wherever he's at, wherever she's at, to receive that living water 
the Lord Jesus Christ, who can refresh and save and satisfy for all eternity in the name of Jesus. If you pray that prayer right there, we don't have to finish to preach. Right now, you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as the eternal water to wash your sin away, to satisfy your soul for all eternity. Isaiah said, look at the word, back to Isaiah chapter 12, 43, verse 12. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. You know what that means? Even you who just accepted Christ, you just heard him reveal his word to you. That's not just informing you his word. He just revealed himself to you. And if you just said yes to be saved, he just saved you. Did you get it? He just saved you when you said yes. And look at the next one. I have proclaimed. Isaiah has been proclaiming this word. Not just when he was here physically on earth. The king of the prophets is honored to be called by theologian the king of the prophets. But when during his lifetime, few people accepted the message of Isaiah. But yet he kept on preaching. For he knew who had called him even while he was in his mother's womb. He kept on declaring. Remember, it's the same Isaiah who stood in chapter 4, 6 in the temple. Says, woe unto me, I'm a man undone with unclean lips. And the Lord says, I got something for your lips. I got something for your heart. I got something for your life. I can save you and send you to proclaim my words. Isaiah said, I've been proclaiming. Today, if you are a saved person, you have a, you have a message to proclaim. When we invite you and tell you, if you're watching on Facebook, share the message. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. We simply ask you to do what Isaiah is telling. I've been doing, I've been, listen, uh, uh, revealed. The Lord revealed himself. The Lord saved and he's still saving. And I'm proclaiming, join him in proclaiming the message of the only one, the verse above, who can save. You're not proclaiming yourself. We're not propagating ourselves. We're not propping out an organization. There are today people who are proclaiming an organization more than the proclaiming the name of Christ for people to be saved. You spend an hour with them, you'll hear all about their organization, never about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's tough for us to say, time out. We got a savior who's the only savior that can save. And we need to proclaim him and him crucified. He is the savior of the world. Isaiah said, I even I, Declare that he is the only savior. He is, I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I, the Lord himself, am not some foreign gods among you. He declares, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am what? I am God. The Lord is God. And he declares that he is God. When you go out there, you're not preaching about Muhammad, Buddha, Allah. No, you're preaching about the God who makes the heavens and the earth. The ruler of all the ages. The ancient of days. The one who will never leave you nor forsake you. Thus, in verse 13 of the same chapter, the word says this. Yes, from ancient days, I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse my action. You know why he said that? Because himself, he is God. Himself, he is the Lord. Himself, he is the king. When he acts, who can reverse his action? Just like in our time of salvation, when he was out to save me, who can save? Don't save Doris today. Save this person instead. Listen, we don't have to fight about racial injustice. Turn it to the king who can fight for us. Watch what he does. And when he flips things around, listen to me. You're going to see the nations coming together and begin to respect each other. Blacks are going to start respecting foreign blacks. White are going to start respecting blacks. And what people will come on in harmony under the ostracism of this king of kings and lord of lords. Let me wrap it up. There's a man by the name of Matthew. He was one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Israel was out without hope, no hope. And they did not know what to do because for 400 years, there was no revelation coming from heaven. The people of God did not know what to do in all the synagogues. You've just simply been having super, uh, a pseudo revelation. Pseudo prophets were all over the place. And the Lord God himself raised Matthew and gave him a pen to write down. He is your Messiah coming. He is your king and announce it to the Jewish people for I have revealed, I have proclaimed and let them know unto us a child is born. 
Matthew penned it down in his very in the very first chapter of his gospel. So I will invite you to turn there with me as I conclude. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Matthew made it clear that the Lord has hope for his people. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, which you, some of you just receive as your personal savior. Matthew in his gospel presented Jesus Christ as the Messiah King. The same King of the Old Testament that they've learned about in the Torah. The same King of the Old Testament that they learn about from Isaiah, who's in charge of all the kingdoms, of all the storms, of all the rain. That King will be born through a virgin. Thus, Matthew in his gospel give us bookends. Listen to me for a moment. In the first chapter and in the last chapter to reassure us of the great commitment of that Savior who will be with us always. Not only when you pass through waters, not only when you pass through fires, not only when you're in the middle of sickness, when, not only when you're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, coronavirus, ICU room, hospital, doctor's appointment left and right, he is there with you. Matthew bookends his gospel with the great commitment that this Savior is with us as Emmanuel, God who loves us, is with us as well. Look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 23, and I'll wrap up our time. Matthew says, the virgin will be, ch will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him, here's our word, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And then in the last chapter of his gospel, Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, while sitting on the mountain of Galilee, Jesus Christ was there physically with the disciples, giving them no commission and putting upon them, listen to me, power and authority to go forth and proclaim the gospel throughout all the world. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, he declared, if you have a Bible to have red letter, those are the words of Christ out of his own mouth. He declared, therefore go, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Here is the great com commitment. And surely I am with you when? Always to the very end of the ages. Yeah. Matthew said, this great king who's in charge of all the kingdoms of the earth, who's in charge of the rain and the storm, who can give you living water for your soul, he will be with you. If you belong to Christ, if you're giving your life to him, listen to me, you pass through the waters, he'll be with you. You pass through the fire, the snow will not shake your boat. In fact, he will take your boat even higher. The waters will not scare you. You will just put your faith in the Lord. Today, you can open your heart, your home, and we dedicate your life and say, Lord, I want to be a light to reflect you in the dark, in the day of distress, in the life of someone, in my neighborhood, at work. Today, he can renew and strengthen you to be his ambassador to do so even for his glory. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for your word today. This Christological teachings on the one who is the everlasting ruler of the ends of the earth, of heaven and earth and even under the earth. We bless him for he came to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness and stamp our spirit with the Holy Spirit and thus we are able to know who he is as our Abba Father. And this morning you reminded us not only that you're in charge of all season, of the rain and the storms, of the snow and even of the, <laughs> of the lightnings, but you also love us to the uttermost. You care for us and you are committed to be with us even to the end of the year. Remind this to somebody who might be discouraged this morning. You are not alone. The king of the universe is your lover. He loves you. He cares for you. And he is with you. Oh, what a sweet reminder. We love you, Lord, in return. We bless you, Father. We yield our hearts to you. We give our hands to you. We give our feet to you. We give our minds and even our spirits as instruments of righteousness for you to expand your kingdom until we hear the trumpet sound. Uphold us who wait before you near to the throne of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May he cause his face to shine upon you. If you are celebrating your birthday upon today, even my dear brother, Thibaut, God blessings on you. Shine and continue to be used by our great God. The Lord's favor rests upon all of you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on all across this room, lift your hands to Jesus. He's here right now. He inhabits the praises of his people. Only praise you, Lord. And we worship you. Wonder at the mention of 